Hello, welcome back to my little demonstration of a still life in watercolour. Look, I'm sorry there's been a bit of a delay. <laughs> I'm afraid some of my so-called budget equipment uh, somewhat let me down. My old laptop, which was punching way, way above its weight, uh, making these uh, the previous videos, uh, suddenly decided to give up the ghost on me. Uh, and lo and behold, uh, next thing you know, my monitor blew up. Well, when I say blew up. Uh, there was a load of sparks and smoke all over the place uh, so I bagged it and ready to ditch it and I thought no let's give it one more go before I throw it away and I put it back on and it's actually working again um, very pleased about that I can only assume that there must have been some sort of a little uh, uh, imperfection in the electronics in the back maybe a, a little fly or an insect uh, crawled across a live wire and poof loads of smoke and sparks uh, <laughs> poor whole thing let's call it insecticide anyway it's going and as for the new laptop uh, well that is so so challenging yeah they all look the same but they all work differently <laughs> little bit little bit like ladies um uh, they take a little while to get to know how they work and so uh, my laptop is um got me on the edge of my technical skills um but let's give it a shot anyway look um i've got a nice hot cup of tea for you here so if you'd like to drag up a seat and we can chew over the fat of the next section which is going to be about the apple and the glass. Well, I think that's enough about my trials and tribulations. Look, let's be honest, you're really not here just to listen to my tales of woe, right? You are here in order to learn a little bit more about the art of watercolour painting. Right, now, in the previous video, we looked at the grapes. Right, now, I do know it was very, very long-winded, but that is the nature of tutoring. You, you need the talk and you need the chalk. Okay, it could be argued, in my case, you could certainly do with a little less of the talk and a little bit more chalk dust. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. That is me by nature. So look, on that we learn how to put on these little gentle washes and we learn how to recover when they went a little bit on the blotchy side. We learn how to put filters on and we learn how to take colours off. So now I can now move those grapes to one side and now focus my mind on the glass and the apple. Right now, when it comes to this apple, here's a word of warning before you even start watching the video. I will be chatting an awful lot. Now, there is absolutely no point in me just swimming around in silence up the deep end of this huge, huge YouTube watercolour pool with a little bit of gentle music in the background. Right now, I know that can be very attractive, but in reality, what I'll be saying is, look, the water's lovely, jump on in, right? <laughs> Only to watch you drown. <laughs> you can drown without me. So what I need to do is to come down towards the shallower end of this pool. Right now, we've done the, uh, uh, the paddling pole, which was the cherries and the little shrub, right? So, think of my chat as like water wings. I'm here to give you that little bit of support, right? So, once you've gained a little bit of confidence and you can take your feet off the ground, then you can deflate the water wings being me and you can swim off up to the deep end and discover what your art is going to be uh, so word of caution here as you're going up river you will still come across uh, the white water rapids when things will go a little bit wrong and you'll get tumbled over so when that ha occurs come back and think about the grapes right because that is where a lot of your recovery will be so once you've recovered off you go again right now back to this apple and this glass in order for me to uh, paint this apple on the glass I need to understand exactly what it is I'm trying to achieve here so in order to do that 
there's no point in me just imagining what an apple is. I need to go and get an apple and look at it and gather the information from it. And that's what I'm about to do now. So I'm going to go and get a couple of apples and my pencil and we'll look at this apple in a little bit more detail. Right now, I'm now about to uh, just draw, uh, draw an apple. Um, as we know, apples. Right, there we are, one apple. Uh, but in actual fact, it's just a line drawing. Um, um, in shorthand, uh, we see it and we think, oh, apple, or it could in actual fact be a tomato or tomato. Um, look, that is a basic shape. Now, what we've got to try and achieve is we've got to try and achieve some modelling on this um, as we did so on the actual grapes. So we need the apple to come around this way, but we also need the apple to come out this way. So we've got uh, a, a, to try and get a, a two-dimensional effect from uh, what is a one-dimensional uh, line drawing. And we can do this in a number of ways. We can go down into the actual, um, uh, where the little stalk comes out, and we can put a little bit of shading in there. That now gives that a little bit more depth. And if, assuming, most light tends to come from above anyway. So uh, let's assume, and once again, the light is coming in this direction as it was on the grapes. Uh, you can't have the light source on the grapes in one direction and the light source on the apple in another direction. So we can actually get, get a little bit of shading. Like so, right now. The apple is now starting to come a little bit two-dimensional and we can give a further clue on this light source by dropping in a shadow from the apple okay so we're now we're starting to get that shape round there right now the advantage which you've got on the on the on the apple which we did have on the grape is that it had the ripening uh, process going on in there which meant to say that we could we we had those little uh, flecks of uh, ripening sources coming round now this can now give us direction um, this way round right now I'm going to move away from this and pick up an apple and we'll look at it in a little bit more detail I've got uh, uh, a number of apples here right now we know that they um, will vary uh, just a little bit in accordance to the variety of apple uh, you happen to have in front of you. Right, now let's get a, uh, a quick look at these. Look, uh, I'm talking about these little tiny uh, flecks which tend to come around the actual shape of the apple. Now we're going to take full advantage of that. Now look, I know that uh, many of you will have... Um, uh, you won't have the brush hours I've had when it comes to watercolours or uh, oils or whatever. Uh, but your thinking is as good as mine. It's just that I need to refocus some of your thinking um, about whatever subject matter it is you're wishing to, to actually uh, paint. So don't use excuses of all... Uh, I haven't had the brush hours. You've had a lot of thinking hours. Right, now look. Looking at the apples, as I said, they've got these um, little flecks coming around there. Uh, there's also a little bit of history in some of these apples. Um, look, look at this one here. Uh, it didn't ripen in these areas here, and yet it's quite ripe around this area around there, which meant to say that at some point there was a leaf uh, getting in the way uh, of the sunshine which was um, shining onto the actual apple. It may well be that this one was facing north, I don't know. Um, sometimes you can actually see uh, where the sun has actually come round. 
from east to west. Yeah, it is east to west regardless of what country you're in. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong on that one. I'm, I'm sure somebody will let me know. Nevertheless, look, uh, sometimes you've got a situation where this um, unripening is quite tight. It meant to say that the leaf was in actual contact with the apple all the time. Uh, whereas if you've got these more gentle sort of uh, shades around there, it meant to say the leaf was just fractionally, look, look, see the light on my finger. As I move my finger away, you get a softer light, the distance between uh, my finger and the actual apple. So it meant to say that the leaf was probably uh, sort of uh, quivering a little bit in the breeze which is around there and sometimes it made contact and it didn't so you'll get quite a tight line around there look it's still an apple so providing you stay within the uh, the color range anything which you paint um, you go into nature would have created it at some point or another right now I'm going to um, bring up another strange thing here <laughs> it's a little bit odd I know a skewered apple Look, I've put these uh, marks on to indicate the actual directions of these little tiny flecks which come round there, okay? Now look, if you notice, look, it's in shadow round there, so that is giving me that um, uh, two-dimensional effect of coming out into the light, lights above, and it's dropping into shadow under there. And having looked at this, look, they, the, the marks continue on round and they go in to the centre of the apple core and that will also apply underneath. They go into the uh, little uh, core of the apple blossom, uh, remains of the apple, apple blossom in there. Okay, so I'm now going to uh, just draw these for you right now. Not all apples will, in actual fact, sit up right. <laughs> oh, there's my dog coughing. I'll just wait till I finish coughing. You okay, girl? Right, okay, where were we? Right, now, now look, not all apples will be sitting up right. Sometimes they may be in a jar, or they, they may be sitting at an angle, like so. They're always a little bit more interesting if they're sitting at an angle, by the way. But even if they're at an angle, you must remember that the core is also at an angle. Because it is in the nature of uh, all of us, we tend to paint down. So if we start to come out, out of the top there and start to come down like that, very strange things will actually uh, uh, occur. Yes, you can get round the corner, but that is not going to get back to that core over that point over there. So you will tend to drop your lines in this direction. And well, there will be something odd about that apple. So when you come to paint the apple, turn your painting round on its side so that it is in actual fact upright. And so that when you come to put your lines in, you be the tendency will be to drop back into the correct sort of area you're going to go. Look, you can see these lines dropping round into the actual core. And if you do get um, a, a, a little bit of uneven shading on there, look, even on this one, look, when I follow those little lines around, they go, yes, into a different colour, yellow, green, whatever. But look, they continue out in the same direction as when they leave. So don't go and paint these at one angle and these at a different angle, because that would look very strange. Now look, you can really see that these are dropping into the actual core there. So if you get a little bit of uh, yellow, um, or a little bit of green, make sure that when you come in to do these little uh, brush strokes, that if they go into a little bit of yellow or a little bit of green, that they come out um, in that same 
contour which is coming round there. I, look, I can just paint, draw that in with my pencil. So look, they're going in and they're coming out in that same direction. Okay, let's um, finish the chat. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I actually had one apple which actually had the unripening uh, and it showed uh, a twig crossing it. That was quite interesting. Uh, okay, let's get the brushes wet and uh, see what happens there. Right, now we've looked at the apple in detail. And so now we're going to take that information and we're going to transport it and put it down onto our paper. Right, now, what can go wrong? Let's be honest. Everything will go wrong, right? I expect it to go wrong, right? But because I've been looking at an apple and the visions which I've got in my head are far, far way above that which I can achieve on this piece of paper. So, look, let's get rid of that and lower our expectations. Now, from this point on, nothing can go wrong. We're going to learn a little bit more about ourselves. Uh, that's a positive, right? So, what I need to do now is to think about this in watercolour. It's not the actual apple, it's my impression of that apple, right? And that's all it can ever be. So, it's about how I feel about that apple, right? Which I hope to lay down on my piece of paper. So, change your thinking about what it is you're going to actually achieve here. Now, we're going to go through the process and I'm going to do two or three different apples because we are all different in nature and as a tutor it's not for me to tell you there is only one way of doing it and that's my way. That is not true. Uh, different tutors have different methods and they need to show you other methods other than that which naturally comes to them and that is precisely what I'm going to do. Right now look so we're going to get one or two rejects, right? Uh, I expect to get a few rejects, right? Hopefully, you will learn a few more skills here. Now look, if the very, look, here's the top end of it. If that does not do what you are hoping it to do, you've still got the upside of it. Look, we'll eat the apple, okay? <laughs> So, look, I'm now going to go and get my palette and my brushes and let's get this little section underway. Right, on my palette here I've got a permanent yellow and a cadmium red. Now, the permanent yellow is a very warm yellow. It's a little bit on the goldy side. Right, whereas your cadmium is a little bit cooler and your lemon is even cooler still. If, just, if you haven't got names on your paints, just think of your yellows as um, lemon yellow could be uh, 9 carat gold, cadmium yellow could be 22 and this permanent will be a 24 carat gold. Okay, So if you go up to your yellow ochre, think of that as an old gold. I don't know why they call it old gold. All gold is old. Right. Now, I'm washing it out. And look, before... I'm going to move my palette now. And before I get started, look. Here's my apple. Right? And it's leaning at an angle. So look, I'm now turning it upright. There we go. Pick up my colours. And look, I'm going to put a wash in here. I'm not going to hang around on it. Pick up a little bit of water. Look, and I'm washing it out just a little bit at the top here. Right? And I will get my tissue. And I will just gently lift that off at the top. Because look, 
I want it lighter at the top because that's where the light falls and look it hasn't turned white because I've got that lemon yellow wash underneath so I will now take my cadmium red turn it to a wash sorry turn it to a wash and I will now come back down on this side it could be a little bit stronger than that that's better right now I need to get a little bit where I think the red is going to go at the top here right that's enough look I've just splashed it at the top there so I'll just lift that off look no damage done right now allow that to dry naturally um, I know that's going to take a little bit of patience but look meanwhile look here I've got a number of apples so let me just zoom that back look I've got a row of apples right now while that's drying off right you can now play around with these apples we've got here this is what I hope you will be doing right and I call these my sacrifice apples so I can rehearse things before I actually go up and uh, put them on my uh, painting at the top there right now I've got a group of apples here look they uh, they're all different right um, and I've moved these colors about just to say look you don't have to follow my brush strokes on this particular apple at the top there right now there's one thing which they've all got in similarity here look if I zoom this down a little closer and back down again here we go look they've all got an escape area right uh, this one's got the escape area at the top what I never do uh, when I'm painting apples or any other objects I never fence them in with a colour right? Um, because I need that sort of uh, where the light tends to come in and I need that little bit of variety and that allows your imagination to pick up where, where I've left off so uh, if, if I come down here look when I uh, uh, drew that apple and I did that right normally speaking when I'm drawing something if I'm drawing that apple there I will even on my line uh, line drawing I will leave that escape area at, at the sorry at the top there right whatever it is I'm doing and the reason I do that is because I don't want it just to be like a a, a thin piece of cotton uh, where I paint within those uh, uh, restrictions of that little fence okay so I'm doing exactly the self same thing here uh, with the paintings so let me zoom that back, back again and so on my next colour right I shall rehearse that colour before I go up and work on the one at the top and this is lovely and there's so much freedom that in actual fact you may find one or two of these sacrifice apples come out a lot more successful because you're not so tensed up right I shall now move back to the one at the top here and I will zoom that in There we are. Right, now I've now come down to a smaller brush. And I've still got that same wash which I put on, on there. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to test my colours first. Okay, that's fine. Right. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to introduce one or two of these little uh, streaks which the apple's got. And I'll build up on the on these streaks, by the way. So, look, if they go over there, it doesn't matter at all, right? Don't make them absolutely regular, uh, because then they'll get a little bit on the bore inside. I think we can just about see them. I'm going to strengthen a couple up so, so you know they're there. There we are. Right. Now, I've, the reason I've come down to a small brush, I think it's fairly obvious. With my big wash brush, um, I won't manage to get those displayed just as well. So I'm now going to let that dry off. In actual fact, they're a little bit on the weak side. They could be just a little bit stronger. There we go. That's better. So I'm now going to allow that to dry off. I'm back on my sacrifice apple and I've strengthened that little uh, colour up just a little bit. Look. Note the apple at the angle once again. Look. Now when I put these in, it is critical that I get them coming in the right direction. So I need to turn my apple up once again. Look. When it's on the side, here's, the, here's the, the stem, and I've got to try to imagine where that core, the blossom core, is underneath that apple. I'm going to come up with a very strong colour now. So, because I can see into that stem, it means to say I won't be able to see where that um, other blossom core is. So, I've got to imagine that it's going to be underneath the apple, let's say, there. So, look, when I come round with my lines, I come out of the actual top core, and then I pick them up as they come round here, and that is what's got to happen all the time. Now, if for any reason I drift off of that line, and start coming out and I start going off in this direction down there now the apple is going to look a little bit odd okay because that doesn't happen so when I'm doing these lines I've got to come out of the core uh, the top of the core round and look I mustn't head off towards that area or this area here as it comes round if it comes out there it will come round and it will disappear up here because in actual fact what's going to happen is that it's going to disappear underneath the apple and come back up where that core is. So as I come round uh, the top here, out of the core, round and this one because it, it came back a little bit will disappear in the apple there. Now okay they, they will become one but it doesn't alter the fact that those little tiny lines they are really very very critical so out of the core round the apple disappear there round we come this one on the outside will just start to disappear here as they come to the center they will be upright and they'll disappear underneath the apple but the moment they're coming around the side look they come round and then they disappear right so even though we're talking about the outside we're also talking about the outer edges so think keep thinking that they're going to come round underneath the apple heading off towards that uh, blossom core Right now, on my palette, I've got a um, Rose Madder, Alizarine, Crimson Lake, call it what you will. Right now, look, I've washed it out, and look, it's very, very bright. 
So I've also got burnt sienna. There's my burnt sienna alongside it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cool this one down by washing in the burnt sienna into the crimson. Right now, look, it's cooled it right down. Right, I'm now going to uh, place a wash on my apple here. Right, don't hang around on it too long. And it will get a little bit blotchy. I'm just going to water the edges out. And I'm now going to allow that one to dry off. I've now added uh, my Cobalt Blue to my palette. And I'm going to add a little drop of that into my previous wash. Not a lot, just a little. Look, I think you can just about see it there. The light shining on it. Okay, there we go. Right. I'm now going to put on a lower wash on the right hand side of this apple. Make sure it's upright. And I, once again, I don't want to hang around. Look, I'm defining the edge just a little bit and dropping down to the bottom of the apple. Right now, in this particular case, uh, I've allowed the other wash to dry. Um, if you practice on your sacrifice apples, you may be able to put uh, the other wash and this one on together. But the reason I'm actually doing this as a separate at the moment is because uh, you might get into a little bit of a panic about it. So now look, I'm going to uh, let this dry off now. Now would be an excellent time for uh, us to uh, pause and allow all this to dry. Look, I don't know if you realise this. You've been sitting there for 30 minutes and your tea's gone cold. So now would be a good time for me to go and refresh my water, refresh our cup of tea. Uh, because look, we've now got a base, a wash base, on which we can now start to paint our apple. And that is all it is at the moment, is a wash base so let it dry off completely then we'll come back and we'll tick away and start paint this apple right now on my palette I've got my crimson I've got my burnt sienna I've got my cobalt blue I've got uh, a little bit of the lemon yellow and I've got the permanent yellow. They're all the colours which I put the washes on with. Right, now, I've come down to a smaller brush and it is a slightly better quality brush. But if all you've got is your budget brushes, go with those, right? So let's now, let's get a look at this apple. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soften off with a little bit of plain water some of the harder spots and these edges around here I've just softened them off just a little tiny bit and I've decided that uh, when I uh, blotched out the uh, <coughs> the permanent yellow I took off a little bit too much so look it's now damp there all I'm going to do is just drop back in a little bit more permanent yellow in there and I, look, I'm running it into the red. That's better. Now I've got a, a, a little bit of a highlight higher up the apple. And I'm also going to take a little bit, and I forgot to put it on there. 
Where are we? The uh, cadmium red. A little bit of the cadmium red, and I'm just going to tick around, coming look, coming out of there, coming round the top. You can almost describe that once again uh, as a gentle wash I've actually put on there. Right now, I'm now going to come down to a smaller brush still. And this, uh, the, the two bits there which I damp, damped off, look, I'm going to put a little wash, keep those directions coming around. out over the edge and this one I want it to go down into the core so there we go I don't know if you can see that I might need to zoom in a little bit closer here I think look these are just little gentle washes I'm putting on here at the moment Look, don't, don't be frightened to uh, turn your paper around, by the way, because you've already established the, 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 the line directions um, earlier on. So if you, do, if you do turn your paper around, you know which direction these lines will still be going. Right, now that is... All it is, look, I'm just gently, gently putting these little colours in now. Right now, what I need to do is to mix up my sienna and my crimson again. And look, here it is now, it's coming round. Look, it's a little bit strong. I've Weakened it down just a little bit. Now look, when I come round, when I'm putting these on, look, I'm not going back over the top of that. Look, I keep that direction going all the time. Now you can actually do this just by little tiny bits, like so. That's one way of coming round there. And you might find that just a little bit easier. But look, once you put it on there, don't go back to it, right? Because um, it will go very strange. Or if you feel a little bit on the brave side, that I'm not going to go on those two, but I'm going to pick that up. I'm just going to sweep it round. I can't go back over those because they're, look, they're already wet. So I can come back down here. Look, I can do broader strokes. But I must do them in one strokes. Right, one strokes. Now I can come back over there because I haven't touched that yet. I'm going to come in on that wash. There we are. Round on that wash there. Right, I'm 
I've just, you heard me, I've just watered that a little bit. Coming up to a, a more gentle wash up there now. Look, and what I'm actually doing now is I'm washing this into that little bit of yellow which I put on there. Turning it into a, a sort of orange. Now, the rules which apply on the darker colours also apply on the lighter colours. Uh, so once I've been over there, because I put a little wash on, it's okay, it's, I'm working damp on damp there, I can actually come back. But it will still turn those just a little bit on the streaky side. Um, one can turn around and say, okay, at this moment in time, it doesn't really matter too much. Right, I've been away from there, so I can just come back with this one on there. Another one on there. Right, now, what I'm going to do now is show you what will happen if you're not exercising this little bit of patience. Right, um, it's got very streaky around there. So, I could get rid of one or two of those little streaks just by dropping that back in now is dry enough. Now strange, as strange as it may seem in this particular case you actually want the streaks because look if you look at the apple look, they are streaky right so but we, we don't want it looking like a ball of wool Right now I'm going to come up to the top there, but as I said, look, I want to leave that escape area there, so I've just picked up a little bit of water, look, I'm just going to wash that into that area there, but I'm following it around just in case it does get a little bit on the streaky side. So I need to strengthen this area up around there. And I'm now having to start making a few decisions. Look, I'm going to turn this around. Look, I'm still thinking about this spot there. Even though I'm out here, I'm thinking about this spot there. So, look, I'm going to strengthen that up and whoop, it will go back into there. That one was going across there, so look, I want it to go back over there, so I'm just going to put that one back in. I know, fuss, fuss, fuss. <laughs> that is the nature of me. Right now, I'm going to let that dry off just a little bit, and I'm going to come back and put another layer on there. But look, I'm going to go and get one of uh, my... I don't have to leave this on the tilt, by the way, uh, because there's no big puddles on there. So, look, I'm just going to come back to this uh, one back down here. And I'm going to do the self same thing again. So, here's my darker colours. Look, and uh, there's, there's uh, my blue on there. Look, if I do this, then it's not going to happen. Look. It's starting to lift the paint off just there. I'm going to exaggerate that because it will happen to you. Look, you'll get these patchy bits. And now, now you start getting very, very depressed about those. Um, because the longer you stay around there, the more patchy they will actually become. Look, like so. Right? And... You're going to think, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. And you're going to keep brushing and brushing over. And you start to end up with that uh, uh, little patchy bit. Let me zoom this right in now. Look. You start to think, oh, uh, look, I'll get rid of this a uh, little bit hard bit there. And you keep doing that. And look, it keeps getting worse. In actual fact, you're now starting to turn... Um, into a, a bit of a muddy effect so what you need to do is to allow that to dry completely off 
and then come back I'm going to stop the camera and just allow that to dry. Right now I think that's dry enough. Look now I'm going to come back and go look pick up from where you think it is. Don't put your brush down. Drop your brush in over the top. Start at the top. Drop your brush in over the top. Once you've done that, move away. Don't go and say, oh, look, you know, I, I want a bit more in there. If you want a bit more in there, let it dry, right? And then come back and do it again. Because, look, if you don't and you think, okay, I want to put a little bit more in there, what you're doing is, look, you're starting to remove the paint again. And it will drive you mad, right? So, look, if you've got a, a bit of blue, let's say that, 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 well, it's not looking that blue on my camera. Um, look, let me put a little bit of blue on. If you've got a little bit of this deeper colour down the bottom there, like so. Now, assuming it's dry, which it isn't, but I will now take my red and I'll start at the top and I'll gradually drop this in onto the blue area. Right now it's still gone a little bit streaky because uh, that was still damp over there. Right now this is where we now start to talk about dry brush. So if I want to put some more deeper colours on there I can put deeper colours on If it's dry, look, just by dropping this on, like so. And look, I've left one or two little tiny bits on the edges, and they're nice, because they, in actual fact, the apple is like that, right? But, if I, how can I explain this? Look, I'm going to show you what uh, I'm talking about by a dry brush now, look. Here's... Here's my paint. Now, here is a dry brush. So what I what I'll do is I'll do this until I'm getting rid of some of the colour, and then I'm going to feather it across the top. See that feathering? Now that feathering, although it's called dry brush, it is still wet. So. Don't keep going back over the top of it. You've got to have a bit of patience and you do that and come alongside, then you let it dry. And then when it's dried off, you come back and you can feather again. Now, it's a very slow process, but you will in actual fact build up colour without dragging all these colours off. So if I come back along the top there, look, I can dry brush I can dry brush into here now you can start to see in actual fact uh, all these little strokes on there you can start to see how the the people who tend to go towards photographic um, realism that is what they're doing they're spending they, they can spend hours just dry brushing these bits in and you can actually dry brush without any paint on there so look you squeeze the brush out there's no paint on there and all you're doing is is just let's see if I can do it up here I'm look, dry brushing back in but even though there's no paint on there I mustn't keep doing it because it would then become wet. So I can blow it, I can waffle it like that, and then I can come back and I can do it again. But much better still is for you to move away from that area and dry brush another area. So look, when we're coming over the top here, I can dry brush in 
my paints. I pick, I pick, just picking up a little bit of paint there, by the way. Look, and I'm going to dry brush into this area there. Right now, am I starting to make some sort of sense there? Remember this blue, and it's really not showing up the very blue on my canvas, but on, uh, on my paper, it's very, very blue here. So I can dry brush those bits back in. That area there. Look, I can very slowly dry brush that back in until you can't see any brush, brush strokes there, actually. And that is what you're doing in, when you're doing this sort of photographic uh, painting. Right, now I'm going to stop there and go back to my apple. Right, now I'm now back on my grape apple. And I'm just going to blend those in a little bit. With one strokes coming round. Turn the brush over. Down. Now... I'm just adding a little bit of blue to that. Right now, look, I used the cobalt blue. If you haven't got a cobalt blue, ultramarine will work just as well. Now, it's a little bit wet, so I need to stay away just for a, a moment longer. Look, I'm going to put in just a little bit of dry brush into the lower bottom of that apple there. I'm dry brushing, I'm getting I'm, uh, up, up the top here, look, I'm just, can we see that, look, I'm just getting rid of some of the paint off of there, look, and now uh, I can come back and drop that into here. No, it's still too wet. I got away with it, but it was a little bit too wet. Sometimes when you look at these photographic um, paintings, um, they're mind-boggling and they are absolutely brilliant. There's no doubt about that. They are brilliant. And they had their place when it came to botanical paintings. In other words, very, very detailed paintings of, of plants or animals and things of that nature. But nowadays... The, the, I, I don't know, uh, the cameras are now so good. Um, so the artist was actually picking out bits which were relevant within that bird or that plant uh, and things like that. And actually I met one who was really into birds and he said, uh, well, it's all right for you, uh, you're an artist. Uh, and I said, well, well, what's the difference? So you. So he says, no, no, he says, you're an artist because you're a bit strange. <laughs> what could be stranger than somebody who can spend hours and hours and hours fiddling around with a little bit of paint, uh, painting a bird? Uh, so uh, the other interesting thing is, while I'm painting away here, the other interesting thing is when, when I was very young and my female art tutor, Diddy Dawson, um, she was very, very good. Um, and as a part-time job, she worked for a hospital uh, because when they were doing an operation, she would nip in there and she would draw, <laughs> paint or draw the appendix uh, with the patient still on, on, on the table. And she was doing it for the um, students because with the best will in the world, she could edit the bits and the students, students could really see what was going on there. So, um, even now, artists are probably still better than cameras when it comes to detailed things. I'm just ticking in. Let me zoom that in. Right now, it could be that when I'm doing this section in there to get to make sure I get into that, to make sure I get into there, 
I might just do well to turn my paper around. Now look, you can do what you want with your paper. Um, nobody's going to put a little note saying, oh, he turns his paper around. He's not a true artist. Right, now, when it comes to this dry brushing, uh, look, I'm just going to give you a, a little bit more brush information here when I zoom that back. Right, now, I've got another little bit of information for you here. And it's, it's odd, and it's something you'll never see on YouTube, by the way. Um, and a lot of the people I know that they would have switched on and... Um, glazed over listening to the old boy chatting on about grapes and apples uh, and moved on so look here's a little gem for you here right so a little reward for your patience um, here we go look if I press the end squeeze out the end of the, of the fibers just by the ferrule look it splays it out into what is known as a little dry uh, fan brush and that can be very, very useful. So now, look, what I've done, I've taken my number three, right, and I've squashed the ferrule on the end there. All I did was to take a pair of pliers, right, and just gently squeeze the end until they splayed out. Right, now I've got myself a very, very useful little fan brush for dry brushing because normally speaking fan brushes come much much larger so look you can do this with any old brush which is uh, past its best right providing it's not a dead uh, dead hair brush uh, a bit like my bad hair day brush um, and it's still got a little bit of life in it just ease it out and there you go look if no, if you've learned nothing else from this video this you will find very very useful right now here's my little fan brush in action right now you can see the advantages of this little brush perfect for on uh, if your subject matter is little furry friends or feather friends but look i'm not going to use this um on this apple because chances are well I know you won't have one okay so just a little tip there for you right now in the same way as we can actually put color on we can actually take deliberately take color off well you saw that in the uh, deeper tone so look now I can get in here and look I've got a zero brush and I've just put plain water on. Now I'll just wait one moment and then look, I'm going to lift it off. I think, I'm not sure if you could see that or not. Uh, let's do that again. So look, I'm going to come around into a more critical area here. Um, look, what I'm actually doing is I'm putting uh, a little bit of uh, plain water through there. Wait for a moment. What I've done, look, I've just, I've just cleaned the brush off, and I'll just move that back again. I, you know, I think there was a little fruit fly just pa flown past my apple. <laughs> it must be getting a little bit more convincing. Right now, in this particular case, the apple is getting a little bit strong. So what I'm going to do, and this is uh, probably a little bit of a foolish thing to do, but there again, I'm a foolish chap. Um, well, I'm strange, I've been told that. Um, first get my brush. I want to get a nice big brush. Right now, as with the grapes, what I've got is, look, I've got a big soft brush here. Uh, we're just plain water on and I don't want it on too much of a tilt and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be very brave or foolish and I'm going to just run plain water over my apple 
look I'm actually taking paint off can we see that yes I think we can just about see that so we can put paint on and look we can take paint off now I'm not advocating this as uh, as the thing for you to do because it will start to get a little bit tired and a little bit second hand um, but this is a, 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 a teaching exercise so this is the nature of teaching uh, one takes a few chances and one does what I'm doing here so I'm now going to get back let that dry and I'm going to get back to a bit more painting on there right now this has dried off and look uh, I run a damp brush over the uh, bottom lower half of the apple here uh, unfortunately the the camera was on pause I thought it was recording so um, just you haven't missed very much there it's still a little bit patchy by the way uh, look now look I've got this roundness coming through here and I've got it actually coming out so what I now need to know is all getting very very samey so now I need to get into the actual top of the apple so look on my palette I've got um, my yellow and my blue mixed the green so what I actually now need to do is to kill that off just a little bit and what I'm going to do is add just a little touch of red and it will neutralize it in other words it's now a neutral color but has a leaning towards green so I'm going to zoom this in very tight now and I'm now going to drop into that core just test my color yeah that would do it's a neutral green so there's my stem in there I need to keep this angle coming round and I'm just going to drop that in and out the other side it's a little bit on the weak side so I'm going to put a little bit more on there let it float in there we are Right now I'm going to turn it around and just come out of the core. And water that off. Sorry, I'm uh, in so close you can't see what's going on. There we are. Put a little bit more colour on there. Right now, that was a little bit weak, um, so I'm going to strengthen up my colour and just drop it in yet again. Let's zoom that back, see what we've got. There's something strange happening. Something strange happening with my camera. Oh, look, even, even on there. OK, I'm going to stop that. Uh, <laughs> no, it was OK. Um, it, it was all right on the camera. It's my monitor playing up. Uh, all went a little bit on the fuzzy side and I think I zoomed in a little bit too close for the uh, camera it didn't really like it so uh, all I'm doing is just dropping this in right this gives me that little bit of depth in there and look I'm not going to bring it out this way 
because this part of the apple will be uh, hiding some of it so it's going to drop into there and while I'm here and I, I was saying that I'm not going to do this but I'm now going to do it I'm just going to pop the stalk in while I've got this colour on my brush and the reason I'm actually popping this in now is because the, 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 the core will look a little bit bald without it so when I put my wash on I'm going to have to find a way of cutting around that so that's enough of that right now this is not a case of the uh, magic stalk and now you see it now you don't look because of all the um, confusion which was going on there in my head uh, what with my camera being on pause and then suddenly my monitor was uh, going all very very strange colours uh, I was starting to lose the plot okay so what the, the actual painting I did on there um, I was not relaxed uh, so therefore it, in my mind it all went a little bit wrong so look as I will always advise the students in this particular case look it's not the end of the world I've just put on some nice plain water on there and I've lifted it out with the tissue because I've got plain water in my secondary bowl. So what I'm now going to do is I'm now just going to go off and recover from the shock. Right? I don't want any sort of smoking mirrors here. Um, what you see is what you get and what happens when you're painting will happen to you also. So I'm just going to go away and have a cup of tea right I'm not going to eat the go and eat the apple but what I will do I will have a marmalade sandwich and then I'll calm myself down regain my confidence and come back and do it again right okay I'm now back uh, having recovered from my little senior moment there uh, I'm nice and calm uh, he says very casually other than I'm a bag of nerves uh, about my uh, monitor blowing up again and uh, I've got the younger dog sitting on my feet now shaking away there because there's fireworks going on in the background uh, look I've taken my neutral green and I've added just a little bit of sienna to it and I've allowed that um, green to dry off um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Thanks, thanks, Trudy. <laughs> the dog cares. Right now, I've allowed that to dry off, and the reason is when I turned it sideways, uh, the the gravity turned out, and the colour ran out of the actual centre of the core. So, I've just left it upright to dry this time. Right now, I'm now going to put the core in, which. I need to know exactly where I want it to end up and look I'll put a little t uh, bend on it because if you look back if you just zoom back and see the other one you'll see that in actual fact it looks more like a nail um, and I was in two minds as to whether or not to put this core back in but then I thought to myself, look, you're not going to want to wait till the next video just to put a, a, a little stem in. So, look, I've done it. Right now, I've also had a chance and opportunity to look at uh, uh, the overall video. And I noticed I've done an awful lot of talking and I'm running very, very short of uh, YouTube uh, video time. So, I'm going to uh, quieten down a little bit and concentrate just tick away on this apple now and you will know what I'm doing you'll know the colors I'm using and you'll uh, know the techniques I'm actually using so I can just calm myself down and get the job done right now if I can't calm down <laughs> the poor old dog she's on uh, calming tablets for the fireworks <laughs> I might even go and take one of those okay so let's move on Looking at uh, the apples here, look, these uh, 
little streaks. Uh, look, they're quite blotchy. All right, so I mustn't get them too streaky. And I'm just laying down a little bit of colour on which to lay another colour on. So one or two of them are slight blobs. So I'm coming in just a little bit blobby now instead of just streaks. Not too many blobs. Uh, right now it comes over there, disappears, comes back in as it comes towards the core. Over the top, disappears, comes back again. Picking up a little tiny bit of red in there now. A little bit of blue mixed with it just to strengthen it up a little bit. Make it a slit slightly deeper red with the sienna and the blue. And look, on here I'm now going to put opposite blobs. Blobs, but they're still going in the direction. What's the actual? Streaks tend to go. And I can put one or two of those. Slightly stronger colour. Closer to this edge here, and that will help to break up just a little bit of my fragmented painting around there. A little bit of water on there. And this um, slightly patchy bit down there, although they're not uh, necessarily. Um, those blobs, I can put in little tiny bits of sort of dry brush just to break those blobby bits out. Now look, I'm not having to wait for anything to dry here because there's no big washes going on now. What one is actually doing is just um, Making little adjustments here. And that's what painting is all about, making adjustments. Once you get that first colour on, you've now got to make decisions. You make good decisions and bad decisions. It's not just called painting, that's called life. I'm going back up to the stem here, by the way, and look, I'm just going to add a darker piece. On the right hand side. I let that dry off and then I'm going to come back and lift off a little bit of colour there as well. So 
something very nice about this sound of silence and just the clinking of the glass. I need that green just a little bit darker on this side of the stem, but bear in mind that the stem is throwing a shadow in there, as well as the actual indentation. Well, I can turn this because no colour is going to run out now. <coughs> and I'm dry brushing. A little bit of the green. Just the tip of my brush, just dry brushing it very, very gently in. just going to very gently dry brush a little bit of the red. Didn't like that very much, so I've just watered it back down again. I think it's the wrong colour. That colour should be over here. So, I should just wash that off. That's better. I'm just going to take a little bit of the, out of the stem. Even down into that coal piece. I know it's dark down there, but nevertheless, it's still... That's working. Right, now, when I come to the, put my wash on the back, if I think that's going to cause me problems, and I think it will, then I'll just lift it out again, put the wash back and then put it back. Right now, that little tiny stain, I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can zoom that in. That little stain, that little stain around there, uh, I'll lose that in the wash. twist on it so I need to put a little bit dark back in there. Right now look, <clears throat> I'll do that in a moment. What I want to do here is just looking now for my zero brush. Uh, when I say zero it's um, treble, treble naught and it's the one I would normally use um, on my miniatures. Right, now what I'm going to do, if I can get that in really close now, look, <coughs> is that I'm going to put a little tiny spot of water here. 
and it's so small I can't see it anymore. Right, I've put on four, you can see it on the camera. Right, and I'm just going to wait a moment. And now what I'm going to do is look, I'm going to go straight down with my tissue, no movement, gentle pressure, off and away. Right, now look, we've now got those little tiny um, white pieces you tend to get on apples. Now they're a little bit large and a little bit round, so what I intend to do is just to take a little bit of the roundness off them. Right, now look, when you put those on, they're random. Uh, so don't sort of uh, suddenly treat your apple like a dice. In other words, look, I've got a six or I've got a five or four. In other words, four in a square. Um, it won't look natural. Right, wait a moment for it. Nice flat piece of tissue. You don't want to disturb anything at all. Boom. Lift off. There it is. Look, there's another one. And look, they're, they're, they're sort of random. They're not like that sort of uh, dice four, dice five. And look, I'm going to put one more in here. And then I'm going to leave it alone. Because uh, one or two is a nice surprise. Right, can you see those? They're, they're nice little surprises um, and if I start getting in too many the surprise is gone. So I'm now going to go back and put in little tiny blobs on there. Once again, look, those are nice little surprises. And this is one of the tendencies we tend to get. You know, I've softened the edges because I don't want them sharp. In other words, they're, they're, they're not stat marks in there. Um, <coughs> when we find something is working, we overdo it and the surprise is gone um, so in this case less is more right I'll just zoom that back there we are right now they're a little bit hard so I'm going to soften them down just a little bit more with just a little bit of water I don't want them to look like sort of wounds. That's better. Right, I now need to go back in and just strengthen the side of my stem. There, you can see it there. Oh, I took all right. Oh, she nearly had my bowl over. <laughs> there you go. Right, the last little thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to stipple in one or two of these little stipple bits which you tend to get around the core. Once again, not too many. Um, less is more. That will do. Right now, we've run out of uh, video time, uh, so I'm not going to have time in order to give you my normal little uh, rundown of what we've 
actually been doing and look I'm really very sorry I didn't get a chance to put in the other alternative apples I will do that in the next video uh, so really all it is is now is for me to thank you for your time and your patience sitting in watching me and listening to me rambling on look without you in all honesty <laughs> there'll be just me sitting there talking to the dogs and talking to a uh, camcord camera with no beating heart in the camera so look <laughs> I think they'd start thinking about taking me away by now right now look if you feel that you would like to see where this little uh, exercise is going uh, and wish to follow my other uh, uh, oncoming video on the left hand side of your picture just below the actual picture on your screen press on my name that will take you to my channel where you're going to find um, other little items uh, hopefully of interest to you so thank you very much I've enjoyed it so maybe we can do this again <laughs> at some point bye bye <laughs>